So assalamualaikum everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sozu aka Bim Fatima. If you're new here, hi, hello and welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much for subscribing. Speaking of subscriptions, if you're not already, please click on the subscribe button down below. Just do it. When you click it, when you first see it, it, it it's like this. I'll insert it here. It's like a red button, but when you click it, it becomes gray. Try it out. I don't know. You can believe me or you can try it out yourself. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. I don't know. <laughs> but if you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. Hit on the bell notification so that way you can be notified every single time that I post. Leave me a like if you like this video and give me a comment down below because I love to see them. So let's get right into this video. Today, inshallah, what I'm going to do is a culture tag. So I have my notebook here and I wrote a couple questions. So let's get right into it. So first question, where are you from? I am from Senegal and Gambia. I was literally born in a city that is in the middle of Senegal and Gambia. So it's called Farafenye, which comes from the word Farutfen, which literally means it doesn't choose a side. So Farafenye is a city that's on the border of both Senegal and Gambia. And I was born literally in a hospital that's like legitimately like close to the border. So that's why I always say I'm from Senegal and Gambia. Basically just some brief history. They're basically the same country. We just got colonized by different Europeans and they decided to like split us up and do whatever they wanted to do. But we have very similar cultures. We speak very similar languages. We have the same exact ethnicity groups. The way that we speak our main language is a little bit different, like Gambian, and I'll tell you guys the languages in a second. Gambians and Senegalese people, like we speak differently, but it's because I think what our official languages are, which for Gambia, the official language is English. For Senegal, the official language is French. So our main language is influenced by our official languages, but we're basically the same. Okay, next question. When was the last time you visited your country? The last time I visited my country was in 2013 and it was a very, very exciting time. I miss my family so much, like I still, um, message them on WhatsApp. You know that's the app. <laughs> if you have family members that live abroad, you know this app because you can voice record and all that kind of stuff instead of texting. But I really, really miss it. And I was really hoping to like be able to go this year, but the year is not over. So I can still keep making a prayer and inshallah, hopefully I can go. Okay, next, what part of the country are you and your family from? And what language do you speak? So my mom's side of the family lives in Gambia and then my dad's side of the family live in Senegal, but my mom and dad share family. So my both sides of my family are from Senegal and Gambia. Um, my mom's mom is Jola. So she speaks Jola and Wolof, but my mom's dad and my dad's family they're both Wolof, so I also speak well. I speak well. I only speak Wolof. Let me let me not sit here and act like I speak both languages. I only speak Wolof. I don't speak my grandma's language, Jola. I used to speak Jola when I was younger because I used to live with my grandparents before coming to the United States. I forgot all of my Jola because I really wanted to know English really badly, and I barely spoke even Wolof at the house. But my mom doesn't speak. My mom didn't speak Jola to my sister, my brothers, and I. So I didn't have anywhere to practice it. I think my sister still speaks Jola. She's the only one. Out of all of all four of us siblings that, that speaks Jola. As for my mom's like siblings, I think all of them speak Jola if I'm not mistaken, but I've only like seen two of my aunts speak Jola to my grandma directly, but I know they understand it and they can like communicate in it basically. Name one ethnic food that you enjoy the most. Oh, that's so hard. Mm, I love all Senegalese food. All of them are the best, but I would say say i guess caldo so caldo is just like it could be grilled fish or fried fish with an onion sauce and you eat it with white rice caldo is good because you can have it with bugage which bugage is just like hibiscus leaves that we uh boil and blend it with like okra and add like lemon and stuff like that so it's really it's sour it's a sour sauce and i'm a really sour loving person so with caldo you can eat a lot of bugage with it uh, some people call the bugage bisop which can be confusing because bisop is also a drink <laughs> because hibiscus can be made into a drink or bugage but yeah that's why i like caldo and i'm a seafood lover that's why so caldo is my favorite senegalese dish name one household item that best represents your culture 
so i don't have this in our house currently i don't think but growing up i remember at one point i don't know how my mom got one but she had a a, a good nut and a cool and that's basically like a motar motar and pestle i think it's called but it's like the bigger versions and back home ours are usually made out of wood so you'll see people have like really big ones and i'll try to insert pictures as i'm talking but people have huge ones that they use to make like chere which is a grain that people eat in the village very often um and then people have really small ones as well just for like household cooking what is your favorite ethnic music let me play it for you guys I have a bunch of Sunny Lee songs that I really, really like, but I think one of my favorites is Abu Chubale Solution. Yeah, I'll play it for you guys. Hope I don't get copyrighted. Okay, so I'm not gonna play the whole thing because I don't want to get copyrighted, but this is one of my favorite songs. He's basically just singing about love and he's just like, these days I'm a little sick because you know, love knocked me down and I really, really like it. In general, I, I think most Senegalese music is just called Mbalakh, but I could be wrong. There's also probably more traditional music that's not Mbalakh. Mbalakh is like the ones that sound like this, like it's like drums, but also whatever else is going on in the background. Um, but I know there's like other music like stuff that my dad used to listen to that I'm not too familiar with but like Dakota and stuff like that and I like listening to it but I'm, it's not like I go and I search it in my free time but if it's on I'll listen to it okay next one do you speak your language yes I do I speak Wolof um my dad and my the rest of my family because they're haters will say that I'm not good at speaking it but I, I'm pretty confident in it I can introduce myself I can hold a conversation I can understand anything anyone says so I would say I speak it pretty fluently. I don't speak my grandmother's language. So that's something I do want to work on is learning to speak Jola. The only difficult thing is, and even with Wolof, there's not really a written system, I think, for our languages. Maybe there was once upon a time. With Wolof, we use either like Roman, the, the English alphabet to write it, or like the French alphabet to write it, or we use the Arabic alphabet to write it. So with the Arabic written Wolof, if that makes sense i don't know what it's called what the official name of it is i can read it but it takes me a really 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 long time because i'm used to thinking in arabic when i'm reading arabic letters but we use like arabic letters to write well off and if i can find like a picture or something i'll insert it so you guys can see it so i'm capable of reading that and i do want to practice it some more because i want to be able to like teach it to my kids one day inshallah but with jola i know not a lick the only thing i know is kasumai Kasumai kip, and that's it. <laughs> Sometimes, like when I call back home, I talk to my grandma. She'll make dua for me in Jola, and I never know what she's saying, and that just makes me really sad. So I am trying to make like a goal of mine that this year, inshallah, I'm gonna take on learning Jola. I think the only complicated part is that there's two different kinds of Jola that are spoken in Senegal and Gambia. So I have to find the correct one, and I guess I could always ask my sister because you know she knows the language so next question what phrase in your language is your favorite oh my god my phrase that i always say all and i think i got it from <laughs> my mom used to say this all the time but uh may allah have mercy on her so i mean she used to always be like muyin and muyin is like what does muyin mean oh my god i can't really translate it but yin is like you all kind of thing right mo is like what so like y'all what the heck is this i don't know how to explain it but for example if somebody is acting out in front of you and you can just be like muyin Bajam. Um, and the only phrase that I know in Jola is Kasumai. So I guess Kasumai is my favorite um, phrase in Jola. Which clothes represent your culture? I think Granbuba represents Senegalese culture the best. Because Granbuba, both men and women can wear it, I believe. But I'll insert pictures of them, but it's it's the most traditional kind of clothes that I know. I know we also have like wax and genyala and all that kind of stuff. Like they're, they're materials of clothing that are very like common. But I think Gran Buba is like the, like when something big is happening, like a huge occasion, like that's the go-to. You wear your Gran Buba. And it literally just means Gran, which is French for big. Buba is just shirt or clothes. So big big clothes <laughs> which drink represents your culture or your country i guess bisap no 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 ataya ataya definitely represents our country and ataya is just i believe it's like green tea 
I think it's green tea, but it's like a loose powder. It's a loose, loose leaf green tea. And then we just boil it in our little bar barada, barada. And people just, you know, jerry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, maybe I'll put in a video, but that's the most traditional. Like people just drink ataya at all times of the day, after meals, when they just wake up, when they're about to go to bed. So I think ataya is our most is a drink that represents our country. Three things you love about your culture. Oh, okay. I love our food. I, like, I've said this before, Senegalese food is the, Senegambian food is the best food in West Africa. Fight me, fight me, fight me. We invented champ and y'all try to co copy it by making jokes. <laughs> I said what I said. No, but Senegalese food is one of my favorite things about my culture. I really, really love that uh, we live in like extended family units. So when I went back home to visit my mom's side of the family in Gambia, like there's like three generations living in the same house. So my grandma, her kids, like my aunts and uncles and their kids. And it's really, really nice to just see and to see the interaction between all of them. And then even growing up, the, my most memorable moments in like Gambia were when my grandmother would have us sit down and she would tell us libs. So a lib is like, a folk tale. So my grandma used to tell us libs and it would be all the kids of the neighborhood that would sit down and she would sit on her little bung or her little chair and we would all just like listen while she tells the story. So I really, really love the like um, intergenerational connections that we have with each other and the community that we have in households. So I really love that. And then thirdly, I really love that we're very fun loving people. I think Senegalese people are very fun loving, very jokey, very comedic they're very funny people and i love that like rarely are you ever in a senegalese gathering where you're not cracking up or somebody's not making you laugh or whatever so i really love that about my culture and my people three ancient traditions that are still a part of your culture i guess i kind of already mentioned this but lib so lib is like folk tales and a lot of the libs that at least my grandmother used to tell us and my mom as well when i came here include like songs um i know when i went back home to gambia i didn't hear anybody telling libs so i'm not sure if people are still doing it or if it's like a thing that they don't do as often but i do believe it's like a tradition that's been carried that's been carried on because it'll be the same exact stories and it's the same songs and there's always morals and all that kind of stuff my grandma used to tell us a lot of stories about the hyena and the rabbit um, and the hyena was basically like an idiot and then the rabbit was like the wise one who always got himself out of trouble but I remember some of the stories that I would remember I would tell my siblings and even though I didn't tell the story exactly the same way they really really enjoyed it when we were younger so like my two little brothers and my baby cousins when they came over I would tell them these stories but I really liked that that was like part of our tradition and I hope to be able to like pass it on inshallah to my own kids and practice my lib skills so I might need to like brush up and watch some videos or ask my grandma for like some stories. Another tradition that I think we've kept is the way that we do weddings. So we do a moor. So a moor is literally like, moor just means to cover something. For weddings like there's a sirrabar. So sirrabar is the same, it's like a, like a wrap skirt that is sewn for you as a baby when you're born and that's what you're wrapped around when you're a baby and it's the same one that is used to cover you when you're getting married so i think that's really sweet and cute i don't know like a journey transitions between being in your parents hands to being in your, the hands of your husband and a third one and i'm not sure if they're still doing this but i remember when I was younger growing up in Gambia, we used to have like Zimba and Kankurang and all that kind of stuff. And I'll insert like pictures and stuff like that here. But it was like they would come and they would do dances. I used to always be scared of them because <laughs> there's like legends like, oh, if you don't eat a lot, the they'll just come and steal you in the middle of the night, which is pretty terrifying. But at the same time, it was just it's now that I've grown up and I've come to like appreciate that like it's such a nice part of our culture that's like so different and maybe it was from like ancient times and that but now we still use it as like a form of entertainment so that's the third um ancient tradition that i think we've kept spices that remind you of your country there's only one jumbo -na 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 -na, jumbo jumbo -na 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 -na, jumbo <laughs> but jumbo is basically beef bouillon and it's like the generic brand i guess jumbo or the main brand jumbo it, all over Senegal. I'm pretty sure things have been changing. Like people use Muggy and they use others. But for me, Jumbo makes me think Senegal, makes me think Gambia. So food that symbolizes your country, Che Che If you ever go to a Senegalese restaurant, a good one. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you ever go to a Senegalese restaurant or a Senegalese person's house, they should be feeding you chabajin or you should be ordering chabajin. Chabajin is like our signature dish. It just has everything in it. It has fried rice, it has fried fish, it has little bullet. If somebody is like, you know, real generous, it can have a little onion sauce or shrimp. It can have like vegetables, dakar, mm, all the stuff. Chabajin is our signature dish. And if you ever try any Senegalese dish, I would highly recommend trying chabajin. And last question, what's my favorite thing about my people? Um, I love that they're very hospitable. So I think Senegal is known for Teranga and I guess Gambia as well. So uh, Teranga is basically like hospitality, like allowing someone to feel so much at home and so much at peace at your home. So whether you're a foreigner or a Senegalese were born here in the States, when you go back home, usually most people, the majority of the people will make you feel very much at home. And I really love that about our people, whether we're here in the United States or in Senegal and Gambia, we're very, very open welcoming human beings and yeah that's our charm so that is it for the culture tag i really hope you guys got to know my culture a little bit more i had fun doing this if you like this video please give it a thumbs up so that way i know that you liked it give me a comment down below if you're not already please subscribe to my channel also hit on the bell notification so that way you can be notified every single time that i post follow me on instagram if you haven't already and inshallah i'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, and if you don't want to scroll down and click on the subscribe button down there there's a little like watermark like right here just click it just do that just freaking do it. <laughs> thank you guys for watching i had a lot of fun and i'll catch you guys in the next one assalamu alaikum peace and love Bye-bye.